Welcome to today's uh, podcast, the eighth in a series, Robert's Rules of Order. And today we're going to be focusing on a question of privilege. My name is Randall Edge, and please uh, welcome my co-host today, uh, able parliamentarian, Laurel Wingard. And Laurel, tell me, what is a question of privilege? Question of privilege is when you feel during the meeting that your rights are being violated and you need to address that situation. And in the uh, chart of uh, motions, in terms of ranking, what is the placement of this uh, tactical tool, question of privilege? Four. Wow, so it's ranked high. Very high. And correct me if I'm wrong, if I look at this chart, um, you have the right to interrupt the speaker. That is correct. So you don't it's have so to- high. Wait, you don't have to wait until you're being recognized. You don't have to raise your hand. You can jump in. Because it's your privilege. It's your and privilege. You're... So in, in, in parliamentary process, the chart says here to request a personal privilege. And in terms of um, the uh, book, because of course that's our Bible. Uh, what does the book say? The book says questions relating to the rights and privileges of the assembly or to its members of the assembly um, take precedence of all other motions except the three preceding, which is adjournment, recess, um, and, and which to yield. Okay, so what would we use this for? What kinds of things would be a question of privilege? The room's too hot, would that be a question of privilege? That, that could be. Okay. Because right. you're not able to concentrate on the, the proceedings at hand because you're too hot. Okay. Now, today we have something a little bit special. We're going to about to go into share mode. You're, you're not going to be seeing us as you're going to be, uh, you're hearing us in the background. We're in the stop motion uh, every now and then, and we're going to add some colorful commentary between the two of us. And the, uh, aren't we, uh, Laurel? Yeah, we're trying. <laughs> okay, very good. Now, this is quite extraordinary because it's not every day you encounter questions of privilege. Is that fair to say? That's fair to say. I don't think it happens very often at all. That's why this one makes it so unique. Uh, I've watched it a couple of times now and I'll probably watch it again. It's I absolutely think it's a very fascinating, a Case very study. fascinating clip. Well, it's and it's from the public record. It's from the yep. Canadian House of Commons. It's from a subcommittee that's working in the House of Commons. The timeline is February of 2021. Um, this committee, just a little bit of background, have been working using, you know, video conferencing, specifically Zoom. This is their fifth hour of, of operation as a committee. We have a, an interesting set of characters. With I, with, is that fair to say, an interesting set of characters? At this point, I'd have to say they were an interesting, interesting set of characters. Covering coast to coast. We have people from British Columbia, people from Quebec, people from, from Alberta. We have a, a huge, interesting cross-section of people. And they're, and they're yeah. trying to get, they're trying to get work accomplished. Right. And we should really under, uh, clearly state that the House of Commons, because it's been operating for a long time, more than 100 years, it has developed a complex set of standing rules. And we're going to be looking at what is happening, not from the perspective of parliamentary process in the Canadian House of Commons. We're, be, we're looking at it from a perspective of Robert's rules. How would Robert's rules apply to the circumstances that we're witnessing? Now, having said that, Robert's rules was based on a foundation a parliamentary process in the UK, as well as France, as well as the um, US Congress. And so as a result of that, it has a heritage that directly relates to uh, the issues that we're gonna be witnessing uh, in, this, in, in this situation. So I'm gonna now share our screen. Okay, and what we have before us is the chairman, is a fellow by the name of Ron McKinnon. Again, this is a matter of the public record. 
And so uh, we're going to uh, just play this and, and uh, from the, from time to time, we're gonna stop. No room. So- Point of uh, privilege, Chair. Mr. Mr. Point Lemery, of privilege, Chair. Uh, very quickly. Point of privilege, Chair. Um, you have just stated that you intend to either suspend or attempt to adjourn this committee meeting based on resources. Now, I do realize uh, that um, we are committing uh, or we are undertaking this meeting from a virtual perspective. Um, but I believe that democracy has to proceed uh, regardless. And it is actually incumbent upon the House of Commons to ensure that we do have resources for situations like this. Um, it is clear that the Liberals are filibustering this motion. Um, I don't believe that um, they should be given a window, uh, a convenient window to stop this uh, the debate on this motion because of an excuse of quote unquote resources. The House of Commons, uh, whoever it should be, the speaker's office, your office, whatever, should be attempting to find resources rather than shut down the committee because of a quote lack of resources. My privilege as a parliamentarian is being violated by your uh, decision to attempt to shut down committee with regard to this. Uh, I submit this as a formal point of privilege and I do not accept your uh, attempt to shut down this committee due to quote unquote resources, find them. Well, uh, point I'm gonna stop right there. Wow, what is happening here? What is uh, this individual member of the committee, this uh, MP, uh, Michelle Rempel, what is she trying to do, Laurel? Well, what we didn't see at the beginning of this is the chairperson unilaterally decided that it was time to shut the meeting down before their work was being done because there was no resources. She didn't say what type of resources, but whatever resources there were, they couldn't continue the meeting. And she felt that herself was, her rights were being violated because she wanted to continue and get this resolve whatever motion was on the table. Now, from a, a Robert's Rules of Order perspective, the, there's a few implications here. One implication is that this meeting is not being run by an agenda with a fixed time on it. No. So the implications is at the beginning of the meeting, there was not a motion to adopt the agenda, which by definition would have put in place an automatic adjournment of the meeting. That is so correct. clearly that didn't take place. They've been working for five hours and the chair issued a decision. I'm gonna close the meeting because of lack of resources. People are going home apparently. There'll be no translation, no one to take the transcript, no one to do the recording. Um, you know, um, so he, he made this decision and she's jumped in. Let's see what happens next. The same point of order, Mr. Thank you, Ms. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Point of order. Can he do this, uh, Laurel? Well, if you look at the chart, point of order is number 14, which means that they need to deal with number four before they deal with 14. So let, let's just see. This member has jumped in under point of order. He can interrupt the speaker. Let's see what the speaker does. Trample Garner, uh, on, on, who is that next? Uh, on the same point of order, dealing with the member's matter of privilege, uh, I'm wondering if the member is suggesting that if we cannot provide French translation, uh, then we should continue on, because I would strongly advise against that. If we cannot pro provide French translation, um, I don't think it would be appropriate to continue. Can she just provide some clarification if she is recommending that we continue, whether or not we can provide translation? Now, from a Robert's Rules of Order perspective, what did he just do, Laurel? He added information that had already hadn't been introduced. So that's actually a question of information, a point of information. It's not a point of order. What that's ranking correct. is a point of information? I believe under 14. It's 16, I believe. Yeah, 16. So, so okay, he can, in, he, he can interrupt the speaker. The speaker did recognize him. Um, you know, that, we're going to have to watch the activities of this chairperson very carefully to see if he is an impartial, you know, chairperson. Let's just see what happens next. No, I, uh, Mr. Chair, on that point of privilege, um, what I am saying is that it is a failure of the chair and the House of Commons to obtain resources 
for translation during this meeting uh, to underscore again, the Liberals, uh, including the government house leader, Mr. Lamaru, is filibustering this motion. He has not talked about the contracts. It's very clear that the Liberals don't want this motion to pass. Um, the opposition parties are clear that we do. Um, so it is not, um, House resources should be here to um, ensure that debate can happen. That includes in both official languages. So um, my privilege is being violated. Um, the members, every member here is privilege is being violated. Um, the, uh, of course, we want proceedings to happen per standing orders with regard to translation. But we're a year into this pandemic. The uh, House of Commons has been proceeding virtually for some time. And I do not accept that my privilege should be violated because uh, they can't find, or you or whoever it is, can't find translation. This should be something that is accommodated for. Um, I don't believe that Liberal members of Parliament and the government should be able, able to abrogate democracy with the excuse that they can't find resources. I mean, if they can't, if, if the government and the House of Commons can't find resources for a Zoom meeting and translation, how are they going to deliver vaccines for Canadians? Come on. Uh, if you, uh, you uh, Mr. Chair, I, I need to finish this. My privilege as a parliamentarian is directly tied to my ability to pass motions or debate motions like this on behalf of my constituents. And the excuse that somehow we don't have resources is not, is not, it, this is a, this is the definition of breach of privilege. This debate must continue. So you need to find resources, Chair. You need to find translators. The clerk should have seen, uh, you should have seen the fact, I'm sure you've been privy to discussions with the center and with other people that this is a filibuster. So Not this true. needs to finish. So I, my, my, I assert that my privilege is being breached as a parliamentarian. If you decide to suspend or attempt to adjourn this meeting due to quote, lack of house resources. And I think most Canadians would agree. We are a year into this. The government has prorogued parliament. It has done everything possible to stop opposition members from getting answers from this government. And now the liberals can filibuster this all they want. But I don't think that it is fair. It is a breach of my privilege to allow them to have a break on their fi filibuster because of, quote, lack of resources. Find translators, find house resources, do it. This is democracy. Get it done. This is my privilege. Well, that Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Be, uh, that was a bit of an emotional uh, um, um, presentation. What do you that think, Laurel? Well, that is correct. Before we even continue to discuss this, I mean, I think for our viewers, we should let them know what a filibuster is. Good point. A filibuster is where tactics are being employed um, to really not address the issues at hand, bring in the secondary issues, basically uh, talking a lot of nonsense and wasting a lot of people's time. And obviously, this has been going on for five hours. And we can see some of the individuals that are creating this this process. I mean, parliamentary procedure works when there's cooperation between the chairperson and the assembly. If, if individuals are trying to, uh, from the floor, delay, deflect, uh, waste time, it's up to the chair to um, deal with those, those type of issues. Obviously, um, this chair has chosen not to um, obfuscate or stop uh, um, filibuster tactics. What do you think, Laurel? I, well, it's it's a, a we didn't see the previous five hours, so we have to go by what we are seeing. But in my mind, this is just seems to be another tactic not to deal with the motion on the floor by shutting down the meeting and. I know if it was me and I was having a meeting and I was cross country with two languages, I would have made sure I had unlimited resources up until the time that something was resolved. And I, and I also want to throw in there, this is a Zoom meeting. Everybody's at home. It's not like they need to drive home in a snowstorm or anything like that. Like they, a translator could be on from the comfort of their own home. You would think that after a year of this, working in a virtual environment, they would have more than one shift of translator available. Absolutely. 
I mean, I as I mean, I've, I've talked to a lot of translators. There's only they they only work in two hour shifts because it's it's such heavy duty work. But they back and forth and back and forth, and it's Anyways. yeah. They they need they needed it all. Well, and if really um, again, back to my point, orders of the day. If there was an agenda to setting a German as fixed time, then we wouldn't even be having this discussion. Let's no. just uh, see how this plays out. Thank you, Mr. Garner. Um, I, I'm going to just say that the House resources are a matter of House administration to to allocate, and uh, the the current situation is a matter of uh, agreement between the, all the House whips and leaders, and it's really not up to the chair. It's not. Is it up to the chair? I would say yes. Yes, it is. He's the chair. Think, he's the traffic cop. He's the guy in charge. He's Have the, the guy in charge. And now he's trying to deflect and say it's somebody else's fault that they don't have these resources. Yes. Yes. It's his decision. No question about it. You know, so um, he, a point of privilege has been made and he's still not actually addressed it. Let's no. see what happens next. And up to, up to the government, how to allocate house resources. Um, if you wish to raise, I'm, I'm speaking, do not interrupt, please. If you wish to. Can she interrupt? She's allowed to interrupt. She's her allowed to interrupt. <laughs> okay. It's point her of point of privilege. You really cannot deal with points of privilege. Uh, you, you will have to uh, take it up with the house. Okay. So he's saying he can't make a decision on a point of privilege. It's got to be taken to somebody else. Is that true? That's not true. That's not true. Um, Point of, oh, point of order chair actually the, the the committee has to deal with this point of privilege it has to deal with it in order to go to the house if i go to the speaker to raise this point of privilege he will say go back to the committee so i urge you to learn your procedure so i'm raising a point of privilege and i urge you to rule on it well uh, no the chair she's right he's right and 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 as we will continue to watch watch what happens to the meeting I cannot rule on a point of privilege. The, the, the committee can can move a motion of privilege, and if the committee passes it, that motion can be passed to the House, um, and, and the House can deal with it. But you can also raise your point of privilege directly in the House at the next opportunity. Um, at that point of order. Be that as it may, we are over time. We have no resources. The, the House uh, administration, um, you know, we, we do not have access to this room we're already th minutes over. So the translator is- Point of order, uh, chair. Point of order, chair. On procedure, you actually have to, according to um, according to the standing orders and procedure, you have to decide whether or not you consider this a matter of privilege or not. You have to. And I have raised this. So that is a ruling you need to make today before you attempt to shut down this meeting. Well, is that right? Yes, it is. I agree with her. I agree with her. And I, I, I commend her patience to um, stand for her rights uh, with the chairman. And again, the chairman is, is saying, oh, I can't make that, that uh, uh, decision on question of privilege. I can't do that. It has to you know, take it to the house, which is, which is another way of saying, oh, it's like being a traffic cop saying, well, you know, for all those uh, driving west, you, know, you should call the, uh, the police headquarters to find out if you can drive west. Yeah. It's almost like saying that, right? Yeah. Okay, let's see what happens next. Mr. Chairperson, as much as the member, Ms. Rempel, likes, she doesn't get to dictate the <laughs> rules of the committee and, and try to misrepresent your responsibilities. Did, did I miss the chair election? Did did Mr. Lamaru get elected chair during that exchange, uh, Mr. Chair? chair please stand. Now that's funny. This is that's where it funny. starts to get funny. Okay, so <laughs> someone is saying, who's in charge? Right? Yeah, and this is where the chairman actually loses control of the meeting i agree i agree yeah. because remember the job of the chairperson is to hold the uh, trust of the group they 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 do it you know it's it's a balancing act and when you lose the confidence of the group we devolve into a state of anarchy and and these are paid parliamentarians and this parliamentarian here, his name is Michael uh, Burnett, is asking, uh, who's the chairman? Who's making decisions here? And, you, and, but you and know I mean, let's just reiterate oh, chair, uh, one more uh, time. Chair, point of order. He needs to be impartial. He does need to be impartial. 
And I think he's quickly losing the confidence of the group. Yeah. Let's just see what happens next. The the member I, I, the, the member Barrett. the member was addressing the chair and Mr. Lamaru was not recognized. I I um, believe I was recognized. Is it is it a free for all? No, he wasn't. Mr. Ram, Mr. Lamaru had before, at the outset before I interrupted. Um, so uh, and you've been asked to rule on a point on on Miss Rempel Garner's point. Um, it is my understanding that that. Uh, if if the member feels that it's a, a point of privilege that that she can take it up with the house, um, I don't think it's a point of privilege on, at at, uh, at this. What has he just done? He's deflecting again. Well, I, I, actually, I think he's done something uh, completely new here. He's made a decision that uh, that uh, this is not a question of privilege. He just made there's a decision that's been made by the chair that this is not a question of privilege. So he's ruled. Whether he, you know, he's his language is, you know, oh. trying to make it a little, a uh, little um, obtuse, but I think he has just made a ruling. Point. Uh, is he allowed to make a ruling? Um, <laughs> he's he, he is the chair. He's saying this is not a question of the privilege. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's just see what happens next. Point of order, I, chair. I certainly invite Point her order, to. Chair. Do not interrupt me. Point of order, chair. Can she interrupt? She's allowed to interrupt. Even on a point of order, she's allowed to interrupt. Absolutely. So she's within her rights. I will deal with your point of order in due course. It, uh, it is my my view that that this is not uh, not an infringement on the on the member's privilege. There he is. He has reasserted his decision. This yeah. is not a question of privilege. <clears throat> so okay, let's see what happens next. And um, I um, challenge the chair. I challenge the chair on his. Wow! What just happened? Whoa! I mean, this is something that you really don't see. So when you challenge the chair, you're basically saying, I don't trust you. And you okay, lost and this confidence. Is, this is under Robert's rules, motion to appeal, isn't it? We yeah. call it challenge the chair. It's, it's a colloquial term, but it's really a motion to appeal. So she, again, has the right to interrupt. And if the group votes on it, whatever decision he's made is canceled. It's reversed under Robert's rules. Let's yeah. see what happens how he deals with this challenge to the chair. His ruling that this is not a matter of privilege. Ms. Ms. Rempel, I will get to your point of order in due course. I so challenge that, that the chair that on your ruling. I Mr. challenge the chair on your I, ruling. I hear your challenge, not a matter but I, of cha privilege. You, you have not the floor to, to you, you don't have the floor to make the challenge at this point. I just wish to make it clear that this is a matter between of house administration um, resources, they, they make the agreement or they make arrangements for, for staff, for, for rooms. Um, and they've done so in, 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 uh, can, can, um, with the agreement of the house whips and of the leaders. So, um, so to your point of order, if you wish to um, appeal my, my ruling that it is, uh, on um, my point of order chair, um, if you look, if you open up your green book on so, page 10, so you're, 50, um, if you you open appealed up your, my decision, so so let's deal with that first. You thing. asked for my point of order, so let's start with okay. that. So point right. of order, if you open up your green book, and I encourage you to do that right now, on page 1060, you actually do have the power to do what I'm talking about. You can act, You actually have the power and are required to say whether or not you uh, consider it a ma matter of privilege or not. So she is actually now um, informing the chair that he doesn't understand his own rule book. That's exactly and, uh, what she's doing. You know, she's, so my compliments to her as a member of the floor, she is prepared. She understands Absolutely. the rules and she's working within the rules. That is correct. She is. Yeah, so um, most interesting. So he's now, she's now under a point of order, uh, schooled him for the lack of a better word as to the procedure that he should be following. Let's see what he does next. So since you have done that, I challenge your ruling and I argue that it is a matter of privilege. And I uh, I request that the chair's ruling not stand. OK, we are. Um, uh, the question is, shall the, shall the decision of the chair be sustained? Mr. Clerk, I would ask you to take the vote. Now, this is very interesting. What has he just done? He's confirmed that he has made a decision, even though yeah. he tried to. Uh, to hide behind it and he's calling for a vote <clears throat> now this 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 challenge of the chair let's just look at this again 
Um, does the, in Robert's rule, do we need a seconder? We normally would, he didn't call for a seconder, but on Robert's rules, uh, he would be required to do so. And under Robert's rules, a uh, challenge of the chair is debatable. Did he call for any debate? No debate. No debate. He's going, he's going straight to the vote. In a meeting where he said that we have no resources, he said the words. Let, 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 yeah, let, let's just go back. We are now going to have a vote where there's no resources. Right, right. So he's calling for the vote. Okay, so let's see what happens next. Um, Mr. Mr. Chair, just for clarification, I'm not 100% clear what we're voting on. What is your ruling uh, that is or is not a point of privilege? Now, this is a classic example of the chair losing control. Mm -hmm. At every step of the process, everyone should know exactly where we stand. And here's a member of the floor of the group saying, I don't, I'm confused. I don't know what's going on. Explain it to me, right? So um, again, this goes back to the skills of the chairperson. You should never find yourself in a state as a chairperson where this is happening to you. Do you agree, Laurel? I absolutely agree. You never so, want to lose, lose control. So whenever it's a red flag in any meeting, when someone is sticking up their hand and saying, what are we voting on? You know, because he, he just simply called for the vote, but he didn't clarify what we're voting on and Absolutely. the implications of the vote, right? Like what, what are they voting on? Yeah, and what's the implications? Yeah. It's more, it, it, the chairman should be doing more than just saying we're voting on uh, whether or not to accept the challenge of the chair. No, no, no. You have to explain if this passes, the implications are. Yeah. Right. So he didn't do that. He just called for the vote, which has led to this question. Um, and, and he's losing control of the group. Well, let's watch what happens next. I, I have uh, informed the committee that we are out of resources. We have to quit, um, which means we have to adjourn or suspend. Um, Ms. Rempel has raised that as a matter of privilege, that it's a violation of her privilege to, uh, to not continue with this debate at this time. I have, dis I have ruled that it's, not, it's really not up to us on the committee. It's not up to, to me as a chair. It's not up to, to the staff. It is a matter of the House administration that allocates resources and, and de determines what resources are available in conjunction with the with decisions by the you know conversations with the whips and house leaders so i i have ruled that uh, miss uh, in my view miss rempel's um matter is not a not a matter of personal privilege um and she has challenged that ruling so so if you vote yes you 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 support the chair's decision that it's in this case it's not a point of privilege it's for the committee to deal with um, it still leaves it open for, for Ms. Rempel to raise it in the house as a point of privilege. Um, so I'm going to stop right there. So he knew exactly what he was doing. And when he, he when a member said, where, where, what are we voting on? He gave a, a crystal clear instruction. Okay. And why couldn't he have done that when he called for the vote? I think at this point in time, because he has lost control, he, he, he doesn't even know what he's doing not really well that wasn't the statement we just heard he should have said before he said let's go now yeah vote. he should yeah. have given those instructions uh when he called for the vote so um fascinating uh, if you vote no then um then you would agree that miss rempel's um uh contention that this is a violation of her privilege uh stance so um is everybody clear on that okay so mr well, clerk well, Mr. Chair, just to that, a few moments ago, I heard you say specifically that it's not up to the government to find resources. So, so we're, we're getting into debate here. We're getting to debate. We have a motion on the a motion to appeal the ruling of the chair. Let us let us deal with that, um, Mr. Clerk. If you please uh, take the vote on that. So, what what has happened here? Again, he's going straight to the vote. Is this debatable? And clearly. It, it needs to debatable. be debated. Right? It clearly is debatable. Absolutely. And a member is debating it. And uh, he's cutting the member off and he's going right back to the vote again. Mr. Fisher, 
Yes. Mr. Killowy? Yes. Mr. Long? Yes. Mr. Polowski? Yes. Ms. Sidhu? Yes. Mr. Barlow? No. Mr. Barrett? Nay, against. Mr. McGuire? No. Ms. Rampel Garner? No. Monsieur, uh, Madame Vignola? Madame Vignola? That's interesting to Ms. note there Mr. is Davey. someone working. The clerk is working. Yes. Madame Vignola? We're waiting on the vote. One of the Six members. yeas, four nays. Thank you. The decision of the chair is sustained. And now we really have no choice. Uh, we point are order, nine chair. minutes past. Point uh, order, there's no, no, more, no more points of order. We have no more time. This is, uh, this is unfair. Ben, J'aurais aimé ça avoir justement de la traduction parce que j'ai absolument rien eu. J'ai même pas pu voter à cause de ça. C'est insultant. C'est enrageant. I wasn't able to vote because I didn't have interpretation. That's a good place to stop. I'm now going to mm -hmm. stop sharing on this video to go back to you and me. Wow. Because there was clearly another member whose rights had been infringed upon by the operation of this committee. And yeah. um, nowhere did the... Uh, I mean, clearly the clerk was still working, but clearly the person doing translation had left because yeah. of lack of resources. So um, where do we, uh, you know, in terms of how we finish this off today, um, what are your thoughts about uh, this whole issue surrounding question of privilege and its, its place in, in Robert's rules? I think it's really important to have that point of privilege because just in general, us as Canadians, we want to have fair inequality and dem democratic procedures and votes. And if you don't have a privilege and the rights of privilege, you're definitely going against all that we believe in. And really, in the end, as a member of the assembly, the group, the floor, whatever you want to say, if the chairperson is operating in a unfair, undemocratic, whatever you want to call it way, it really is the final refuge of the member to fall upon when they feel that for however it's taken, um, you know, whatever has transpired, their rights have been impinged upon as a member of the assembly, whether it be recognized, whether they have their voice heard, uh, you know, the meeting room is too hot, um, you know, there's not proper translation, whatever the issue is, when a member feels their rights have been violated, their place of refuge is this question of privilege, which is what makes it so interesting, dynamic, it's highly ranked, it's number four in terms of the ranking of motions, you can interrupt the chair, um, it, it has a place, and we saw it in action today, and I have to be frank, I've been involved in watching um, parliamentary process for nearly, uh, I hate to admit it, three decades now, I have never seen it used um, so, so appropriately with such passion, with such um, effectiveness as I saw witnessed in this, this one uh, situation. I felt it was really important to do this podcast today to really um, focus in on this tactical tool that most people don't use and aren't aware of what it's all about and are almost afraid to use it, but really it falls to the last refuge of, of saving their rights. And I mean, I learned a lot from this too, and the question of privilege. I mean, there's been lots of times where I have been in parliamentary or Roberts Rules of Order meetings where I have felt that my rights were violated, but I never said anything. So now knowing this, I think it's really important that people realize that they do have the rights and they have this number four so, item that they can they can go to. So that uh, brings an end to our session today of uh, parliamentary process and action. Um, there'll be more to come, uh, but today 
thank you for watching. If you find the information on this YouTube channel helpful, feel free to subscribe. Uh, your comments uh, and questions, I always look forward to seeing them. Um, until the next time, uh, we're signing off. Have a great day. Bye, everyone.